Hey everyone, this is Lomi, attempting to make a tutorial today for the side laced pants I recently made for Rune. These are awesome for dolls with fantasy parts because you don't have to remove their huge feet to put them on. The pattern is simple, just a few pieces. I ironed these before I cut them out and then folded the pieces. They sat there a few weeks and you can see how smart that was. Anyway, we'll start with the pant legs, putting one front and one back together with right sides together, and sewing the inseam. This is the inside of the leg. I'll finish this edge with a zigzag stitch. Remember the part where I just said put right sides together? Guess who didn't double check? Picking out seams isn't the end of the world, but getting the back stitching out is always annoyingly difficult, and I'd already zigzagged the edge, which made it even harder, so double check. Make sure you're sewing pieces the right way before you sew them. Even though I've been sewing for a while now, I still manage to do stuff like this all the time. So, putting them together with right sides together. Should have known when I did this that this project was going to be problematic. It's kind of funny because the first pair went together so well that I thought making another pair for a tutorial would be a breeze. Okay, I don't know how this nick out of the corner of one of my pieces happened. I swear it was not there when I cut these pieces. It's not so bad that I can't work around it, but this is not what I had in mind when I started this video. I don't have enough of this fabric left to cut a new piece, so moving on. The two halves of the pants go together with right sides together, lining up the curved seam that creates the crotch and the seat of the pants. I sew around this seam and then finish the edge with a zigzag stitch, just ignoring that notch in the center back for a moment. Now we'll attach the lighter contrast panels to the sides of the back of the pants. If you can't tell the front from the back at this point, the front's curved seam is not quite as deep. I like to use a contrasting color, but you can make this flap the same color as the rest if you want. The purpose of the flap is to protect your doll's legs from the scratchy metal backs of the eyelets. They go against the edge of the back with right sides together. Sew the side panel on, then finish the edge with a zigzag stitch. Now, to prevent fraying, I'm going to finish the edge of the entire garment with a zigzag stitch to prevent fraying. I just said that. This takes a little while, but I just go all the way around everything. While I'm doing that, I want to take a second to give a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. I've done so much making and crafting and sewing in the past few weeks, and without your support I never would have been able to get all the supplies needed for everything I've made, so hopefully you've enjoyed seeing what I've been doing with your support. It really means a lot to me. Once I've finished all the edges, I'll take the pants to the ironing board and press everything flat. To create the pocket for the eyelets, I iron the pants with the contrasting side flap turned to the inside. This gives a really nice, crisp edge. Then the flap gets folded out about half an inch from that edge. 
which creates a nice little pocket space that will hold the eyelets and keep the doll safe from potential scratches. I sew the fold in place by stitching right along the edge. I keep my stitches really close to the edge because I'm comfortable doing so, but if you need a little more space, go ahead and give it to yourself. It might make your pocket a little more shallow, but hey, your choice. Comfort with tiny seams like this comes with practice. See? Pretty eyelet pocket. In order to avoid bulkiness where this flap goes underneath the front side of the pants, I don't hem this little side flap. It doesn't matter if it's beautiful because this edge will never be visible when the pants are on the doll. But to ensure it won't fray, I run a small, tight zigzag stitch about 1mm in stitch length down the edge of this panel. The loose threads can be trimmed off the edge, and now I know this won't fray at all. The front edge of the pants will overlap this panel, so I fold the edge of the front over to create a wide hem, about half an inch wide. That'll give me space for the eyelets on the front, too. This gets sewn down with a straight stitch. Both halves of the front get finished this way. That leaves us with the sides of the pants open and ready for laces. Now we'll address that little notch in the back waist of the pants. I'll start by treating the edges of the cut with fray check. Fortunately, I'm not doing a rolled hem on these pants in order to avoid bulkiness. That gives us plenty of space to fix this problem. When using fray check, do not squeeze the bottle. Just gently run the nozzle along the edge of your fabric and the fabric will wick up all the liquid it needs. Fray check will discolor fabric, so be careful if you're using it somewhere it might be visible. It's basically a kind of super glue. While the fray check dries, I'll go ahead and finish the front waist of the pants. This is done by simply turning the top edge to the inside by about half an inch, and then sewing it down. Easy. Then we'll finish the cuff of the pants. These are knee length, of course, so they show off the doll's fantasy legs. Just fold up the bottom edge of the pant leg by about a half inch and sew it down. However, pay attention to what you're doing because I messed up again and I don't even realize it until way later in the process. When sewing these cuffs, it's fine to sew down the front side's edge completely but stop at the line of stitches where we sewed in the fold on the side flap. Do not be like me and completely forget about the little pocket. I sewed all the way across the side flap. If you sew that contrast flap shut, you won't be able to put in eyelets later and will have to pick out the stitches. Like me. Do as I say, not as I do, because apparently sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. The last thing to sew is the waistband. Now that the fray check is dry, I fold this in by about a half inch, just like the other edges, then sew. Fortunately for me, this notch isn't a half inch deep, so I have just enough room to work around it.
In addition to the seam along the bottom of that fold, I'll also top stitch along the top edge to make sure the waistband is secured well above that notch. On the right side, you can't even tell that there was anything wrong. Next is time to put in the eyelets. Starting about a quarter of an inch from the waistband's edge, I use a water soluble pencil and mark every two centimeters. I feel like this is the best spacing for this, but you can use more or fewer eyelets if you prefer. Just be aware that if you use fewer eyelets, you may have some gapping. Also, make sure you use the same number of eyelets on the front and back. I use 14, which just fits on both the front and back. I use my smallest 2mm leather punch to make holes for these eyelets. My eyelet setter tool has a punch as well, by the way, but it's a little bit larger, and I like the eyelets to fit really snugly against the holes because I feel like that makes them less likely to get pulled out later. I've never had any issues with any eyelets tearing out, so I guess it works. have the hardest time setting the eyelets today. They don't want to go through the fabric, I can't get them to stay in, and my hands are not cooperating. I guess it's just not a good day for crafting, huh? And then we reach the part where I realized that I sewed my side pockets closed and can't put in my eyelets. Good job, me. Fortunately, this isn't hard to fix, but ugh, I can't believe I did it. I'm so frustrated at this point, and everything that's gone wrong is pretty much my fault. I should have just stopped at this seam like I did the first time I made this pattern. I don't know why I didn't. See how stubborn the eyelets are being today? They just keep falling out. But eventually I get them all in. The sides are finished now. I'm so done with these pants, but I'm not finished making them, so I'll do one last thing. This part is optional, so feel free to skip it if you want, but I cut some elastic for the bottoms of the legs to help keep these snug against my doll's calves. The elastic I use is really lightweight, so it won't interfere with movement. It just helps hold the pant legs in place. In addition to the elastic on the legs, I also cut a small piece of elastic that I sew to the inside of the back waistband. This piece doesn't need a lot of give, so I sew it with a straight stitch. Adding this helps keep the pants tight against the doll if the laces on the sides come loose, so his pants won't randomly fall down later. 
As for the elastic for the pant legs, I add that with a zigzag stitch, so it's got maximum stretchiness. It goes on from the edge of one eyelet panel to the other, so the part where the laces go through will still lay nice and flat. And now these very, very frustrating pants are done, and I am not going to even try to lace them up today. But you can pick a matching ribbon or string or a pretty contrasting color if you like. There are lots of options, and this presents a great opportunity to use a different color to help tie together the rest of the colors in a doll's outfit. As for me, I am also done. So done! And I am going downstairs to make coffee, so here's a picture from last week where Rune was wearing the brown ones. I don't even like coffee, but it's one of those days. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.